Welcome to Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour presented by NASCAR on Fox. And on today's Victory Lap, uh, we actually have a little more time. So we'll do the Victory Lap and the long interview. And it's with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., this weekend's winner. Uh, we're going to talk all about his race win uh, this weekend and get a little background information on his season and team change and everything that goes with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So I hope you enjoyed the listen. Well, Ricky, you had a phenomenal finish to the weekend. I know that Talladega weekends, speedway, super speedway racing in general, general is always um, a little bit more stressful than everything else. But it seems like you deal with the stress better than most. Uh, fourth win on, on a super speedway. Tell us about your weekend at Talladega. Yeah, you know, Talladega always presents a you know great opportunity. I think you know I think a lot of us feel that way. Um, you know, but for me and my team, I feel like we put a lot of preparation into you know our race car, making it drive good, making sure that I can take pushes, I can push people, and um, you know we don't qualify very well, but but we race really well. And then you know we do a lot of pre-event work on you know how to time that last uh, green flag pit stop, making sure that. You know, I get a good enough track position throughout the the start of that third stage and uh, save enough fuel at the same time so that, you know, our pit stop can be, you know, as short as possible. And I think that was the win and move for us, really, was just making sure we executed that last pit stop. We were able to leave pit road with, you know, the nine behind us. And, you know, eventually that whole line ended up being the outside line and, uh, you know, kept us on the front row battling for the for the win. So, um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it. A lot of luck, you know, missed that wreck there at the end of stage two. Uh, but, you know, just kept working our way towards towards the front and saving as much fuel as we could at the same time. And uh, everything worked out uh, according to plan. Well, you had control of the race before the big wreck there, and, and then you wound up keeping control of the race uh, all, the, all the way to the end. And, and I think when you look at that wreck, how close was the car to, to kind of being out of control? Because it ripped a hole in the door um, that was all the way almost to the metal in, in certain spots. So uh, how close was that for you? Yeah, it, you know, it was wild. Uh, you know, we had already cleared the 38 and, you know, I was just kind of minding my own business, you know, making sure, you know, the nine was, you know, directly behind me. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, I just got smoked in the door and, <laughs> you know, it, it happened so fast. And luckily it hit me, you know, kind of dead center of the, the car. And I felt like it just moved my car up, you know, a lane a little bit. I don't feel like I really corrected or anything. Um, you know, so it got super fortunate there. It bent the door bars. I mean, it, it hit a ton. So, um, you know, I was bummed at that time because, you know, I felt like if we were racing it out, um, you know, and I talked to Chase afterwards, he was able to get me to the start finish line, you know, kind of in front of the two for 95% of the laps that, that we were battling there. And, um, you know, and I was pumped about that. And I knew with the speeds that we were running uh, lap time wise, I didn't think the third lane was going to be able to form. Uh, so I was pretty comfortable in that position. And then, you know, when the wreck happened, you know, green, white checkered, you never know how it's going to be. And luckily, uh, we all got it right for once and, and we only had one green, white checkered and uh, we had enough fuel and, and all that. And I had all my Chevy teammates behind me. So I felt comfortable about that. Um, you know, I was just when I got off of turn four and, and Byron was pushing me, the six got clear and I thought he would pull up in front of me. And, and luckily he didn't. So I was able to side draft him there and, uh, you know, Byron pushed me to the line. You talk about the the, the strategy piece of it. You know, there's there's so many things that I, I don't think a lot of people outside of the sport completely understand. When you you talk about the manufacturers and the plan with not only your team but all the other teams that are that are Chevrolets, um, you you have this fuel savings piece of it that that makes for great pictures. Uh, you know, it's four wide cars coming and going, and then all of a sudden when everybody kind of singles out, uh, you know, into two lanes, that's really all there's going to be when everybody's full speed. What's that like? Explain to everybody who's listening what it's like to try to save gas and be in the front, because I always found that extremely difficult. It is very difficult. You know, there was a lot of times that, you know, we, we have all the data, you know, third, fourth in line uh, is, is probably the best spot to save fuel. You know, leading a line is definitely not where you want to be. So uh, you kind of get your pawns that go up there and, and you want to you know, lead some laps. And, you know, it's frustrating because you want to go up there and lead, but at the same time, you want your pit stop to be as short as possible. So, you know, I don't think there's anything that is going to change, uh, you know, how we speedway race. Um, you know, we, we are always going to want to save fuel and 
Um, make sure that, you know, when we do pit, we got the, you know, the most fuel that we can have already in our car. But yeah, just for me, you know, we started 32nd in the race and I was like, all right, I'm going to jump to the outside line knowing that, you know, not everybody's going to get going and, and push hard early. And, uh, so we got up into the top 15, um, and, and that was kind of where I was comfortable, top 10, top 15, uh, and then, you know, you, you want to be 50, 60% throttle and you want to just keep the gap, uh, to the car in front of you as tight as you can, uh, with this least amount of throttle. And, you know, it's very, very difficult, but, um, you know, it's nice when you get it right. And your guys are telling you, Hey, we got more fuel than everybody around us. Uh, you know, and we're still at the front. So, um, it can be done. Um, it is cool that, you know, every now and then you can kind of throttle up and, you know, like make that third, fourth lane work. I mean, that was, it's been a long time since we've been four wide for that long. I feel like at Talladega and um, yeah, luckily the cars drive really well and, and everybody was pretty comfortable. So you got done with the race and you decided to climb the fence and uh, I, I didn't know if, was that the plan was to climb the fence and get in the starter stand. You got down and then you got back and then you were like, well, how in the hell am I going to get back over the fence? It looked like a lot of work. Was it, was that the plan? Uh, so my crew guys are like, Hey, we're climbing the fence with you. I was like, perfect. Um, we'll do that. So climbed up and then, you know, when I got going up, I looked and most catch benches have the, you know, kind of angled out at the top and, you know, right there at the flag stand, that one just went straight up. I was like, Oh dang, I'm going to go up and over. Um, I did a, uh, an appearance for Taylor generators up in a suite that was right there at the start finish line. And I saw some of the kids with their old miss gear on, uh, down in the front row, uh, that I had seen earlier in the day. And, they had actually asked me, Hey, when are you going to do American Ninja Warrior again? I was like, well, here we are. We're kind of doing it right here on the fence. So I uh, climbed over and I saw them and then I turned to the officials and I was like, Hey, is there a gate? Uh, and they're like, no, you got to go back the same way you came. So uh, back up the uh, you know flag stand and, and back over. So um, yeah, no, it was wild. It was fun. And uh, it, it's cool to win at Talladega. That's for sure. Okay. I, I can't, I can't go past the American Ninja Warrior comment. It, please, please elaborate on the American Ninja Warrior comment. What does that well, mean? I mean, I, I, Blaney and I did the American Ninja Warrior show actually after my Talladega win in 2017, uh, we flew up to Cleveland and, uh, and we were on the show. Um, and it has since surpassed, you know, my, you know, ability to do some of the things that they do. Uh, my spotter tab, his son's actually, uh, Bentley is actually in the top, you know, kind of three of his age group in American Ninja Warrior. They have a, a deal for, for kids all across the country. And so, um, yeah, for me, man, I, I it, it's, it's surpassed me, but, uh, I do like climbing on things. I've always done that when I was a kid, you know, climbing trees, hanging out in the woods, um, you know, just, just a lot of fun things. And so, yeah, climbing the fence, um, you know, was kind of right up my alley. Yeah, well, I, that that explains why you scaled that fence so easily. You've obviously practiced practiced climbing things, and yeah. swinging on ropes, and whatever else comes yeah. with American Ninja Warriors. So that that seemed that seemed pretty effortless for you. So that that explains a lot of things. When you when you got down, you started doing your interview. Being a dad, man, it's a, it's a different yeah. interview when you have that that boy sitting at home and and mom's at home and and just explain the emotion that comes with not only winning the race but winning the race now that you're a dad. Yeah, that was, um, you know, I, I kind of joked with Madison. I was like, man, y'all aren't coming to, I, they didn't, she didn't come to Atlanta. She had a wedding to go to. And I took my mom and Stetson to Atlanta. And I told Madison, I was like, Hey, uh, don't be mad if we win. And, you know, I got Stetson and victory lane without you. <laughs> and, um, you know, we had a really good shot at it, uh, at Atlanta, I had a fast car, but it didn't work out. And then, um, they came to Kansas last week and on the flight home, Stetson got a little restless the last probably 20 minutes and uh, we've had a lot going on here at the house. And so Matt is like, you know what, I'm just going to chill out here for the weekend. Um, so I went, went to Talladega by myself and I kind of let myself think a little too far ahead during that red flag. I was like, man, if we do pull this off, Stetson and Madison aren't going to be here. And then, um, yeah, doing the interview, it just kind of hit me a ton of emotion. Um, de definitely wanted them in, in victory lane, but couldn't wait to get home to see him last night. And, uh, yeah, it definitely means a lot more and, and definitely hits different, uh, when you have a three month old son at home and hopefully I can do this for, for quite a bit longer and, uh, can get him in victory lane, 
um, you know, when he's at the racetrack. Well, you got to love that emotion as a dad. It was pretty, pretty cool to see. 